Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, based on the time zone. Thanks for joining today's session. Myself, Gigi Jayasing. I have been working in Salesforce for over 11 years now and have worked on almost all the major areas of Salesforce, like Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Einstein, Integration, Aura, Salesforce DX, etc. I'm an application architect, and I hope to complete the system architect certification as well this year. Today's topic is about bulk API using PK Chunky. I have had the fortune of working on multiple complex SF implementations. In one such project, we had a requirement to retire a set of features. As a result, a lot of data had to be extracted and archived. We used PK chunking in this scenario, which made our task really easy and faster. As this is related to data, we can first go through the basics of managing data. Getting correct data, manipulating it, managing it, obeying all the rules that the system enforces, and loading it correctly is always a headache, especially if you are dealing with millions of records. To start with, we need to understand the basic concepts while fetching data. Custom index and the record ID are the two parameters used for easy and quick retrieval of data. Salesforce support custom index on custom fields, which will help us to easily locate the rows without scanning every row in the database. Index contains sorted column and pointers to the rows of data. Query uses the index columns to quickly identify the data row without scanning the full table. The next parameter is the Salesforce ID, as you all know, which is the 15 character or the 18 character ID of the record. This is the fastest way to find a record in the database by using the ID in the where clause of a query. As you all know, Bulk API provides a programmatic option to quickly load or retrieve your org's data to and from Salesforce. Bulk API is based on the REST principle and is optimized for loading or retrieving large set of data. We can use it to query, query all, insert, update, absurd, or delete many records. But if your table is a massive, then the bulk queries usually time out or gives errors as it finds it hard to complete the process. Here comes the usage of PK chunking. PK stands for the primary key that is the ID of the record, which is always indexed. This is a feature enabled by Salesforce in Spring 15. We can use a few parameters for the bulk API jobs and the platform will automatically split the queries into smaller chunks based on the record ID. This makes the larger queries manageable while using bulk API. The query is divided into smaller queries and each query will retrieve a smaller portion of data, parallelly, thereby making the process easy and faster. Extra queries are run with successive boundaries and the number of records to be retrieved by each query is called the chunk size. So each query will retrieve maximum number of record as the chunk size. For example, the first query retrieves the record between a specified starting ID and the starting ID plus the chunk size. And the next query retrieves the next chunk of record and the process will continue until the, all the data is retrieved. For example, let's say we have a account table with more than 10 million records and we are going to retrieve this 10 million records from account and the sample query for this example could be select name from account. If we have set PK chunking for this bulk API process and we have specified the chunk size as 2,50,000 and we have mentioned the starting ID as one of the record ID, then this query will be divided into 40 different queries and each query will retrieve the records as mentioned in the where clause. Now we can check when to use PK chunking. Salesforce recommend enabling PK chunking if there are more than 10 million records in an object to improve the performance. And if the bulk query constantly time out, in that scenario also, we can use PK chunking. PK chunking is supported in most of the standard objects, all the custom objects, the sharing and history table of the supported object. We can go through some of the common errors that we face during data management. The first problem is the non-selective query against the large object. That means the query is not selective enough to find the exact result in a large object. The second problem is no response from the server. That is, the query takes too long time to respond. The third one is time limit exceeded. That is, the request exceeded the allowed time for processing. 
And the fourth problem is too much data retrieved by the query, which will hit the governor limit. Too many query rows, 50,000, or the remote response size exceeded maximum of 15 MP. Now we can check how, we, how PK chunking work in a simple analogy of fetching people in the city. We can go through each of the problems that we have discussed in the previous slides one by one. The first problem was non-selective query and the sample request in a simple analogy of fetching people in a city could be get me all people who wear an eyeglass and the response from the system will be I give up because it find it hard to find the result from a larger area. The second problem was query timeout and the sample request in the analogy of fetching people in a city is find me a seven foot tall person in a pink tuxedo. And the response from the system, after searching all the day, I can't find any, I give up. It couldn't find the actual result from the entire uh, city. The third problem was too many results found and the sample request for this scenario is find me all people above 40 years of age from your city. And the response from the system, after searching for 10 minutes, the bus is full. The system couldn't retrieve the entire result because it already reached the maximum response that it can obtain in a, in a single transaction. Now we can check how PK chunking work for these different problems in the divide and conquer mechanism or parallelism. We can divide our entire city into smaller area and we can search through this smaller area and the PK chunking will do it automatically. Now we can go through all the problems that we have discussed one by one after enabling PK chunking. The first problem was non-selective query. After enabling PK chunking, the modified request would be like, get me all people who wear an eyeglass in your small search area. So we have added one more phrase in the query that is in small search area. And the response from the system is with pleasure because it find it easy to search through the smaller area to get the results. The second problem was query timeout and the modified uh, request after enabling PK chunking is find me a seven foot tall person in a pink tuxedo in your small search area. And the response from the system is from area one, I didn't find any, sorry. From area two, didn't find any, sorry. From area three, found one. And from area four, didn't find any, sorry. So it could find the actual result as it is divided into smaller area, which helped it to search uh, easily and faster. The third problem was too many people found and the modified request is find me all people above 40 years of age in your small search area. And the response from the server is from area one, 20 people in our bus, from area two, didn't find any, from area three, 50 people in our metro. So this time the server could retrieve all the possible results as it is divided into smaller area. Now we can check how to enable PK chunking in bulk APA process. As we have discussed, we need to add certain parameters to the bulk APA uh, request headers to enable PK chunking. The first parameter is a field name, which is S force enable PK chunking. And the field values are true and false. So if we have not mentioned the field values in the field name, then the system will automatically consider it as a true when the field name is available in the request header. The next parameter is the chunk size, which is the number of records retrieved by each query. The default chunk size is 2000 and the maximum value is to like 50,000. So if we have not mentioned the chunk size in the header, then the system will take the default value as the chunk size for the process. The fourth parameter is a parent. We need to specify the parent object when we are using PK chunking for queries on sharing or history tables. And the last parameter is the start row. This is the 18 or 15 character record ID. And this is the lowest boundary of the first chunk. So if we have not mentioned the start row in the header, then the system will take the first record ID as the start row. So I have also enclosed a sample request header after enabling PK chunking, which would be like S force enable PK chunking, chunk size is equal to 50,000, parent equal to account, and start row as one of the record ID. Now we can see how we can enable PK chunking in some of our bulk API tools. First, we can check how it works in Workbench. So in Workbench, under Utilities, under REST Explorer, we have, we have an option to submit a bulk API job by posting a URI. 
So in the sample URI, we need to mention a sync keyword to specify it is a bulk API job. So in the bulk API job, we have two more parameters, which is the request header and the request body. So here in the request header only, we need to mention the PK chunking header, which is S4's enabled PK chunking, and the chunk size, parent, or the start row as and when required. The request body is in XML format, and it, the request body will contain the operation that we are doing and the object on which we are doing the operation. So once we execute this URI, system will provide us a raw response, which contain the ID of the job that we have initiated as part of bulk API process. The raw response will contain other parameters like the number of batches queued, number of batches in progress, number of batches completed, batches failed, and total number of batches. If we want to check the status of any of the bulk API job that we have initiated, in Workbench, we have an option called bulk API job status under utilities. We need to specify the job ID that we have initiated as part of the bulk API job, and we need to click on the get status button to get the response. And the response will give the status of the job that we have initiated. Now to get the results of the job that we have initiated, we can use the get request, and in the workbench under utilities under Rust Explorer, we have an option to get, and the sample URI to get the result is uh, services slash data slash version slash, slash jobs job ID slash results and we need to execute this URI to get the response. The response shows the result of the SQL query that we have ran as part of the job. So this is how we can enable PK chunking in Workbench. Now we can check how we can enable PK chunking in CURL. CURL is nothing but client URL, which is the command line tool for data transfer. To enable PK chunking in CURL, we need to execute a certain, step, a certain set of steps in sequence. First, we need to log into the Salesforce org from which we are going to retrieve the data. Then we need to get the session ID for that particular org. For that, we can run the below script in the developer console to get the session ID. Session ID is unique to a particular org, so this can be used uh, for retrieving data from that particular org while using CURL. Now we need to create an XML file, which is called the createjob.xml, and we need to save this in, a, in, in one of our local folder. And this file will contain the operation that we are doing and the object on which we are doing this operation. Now we need to open the command prop and navigate to the local folder by giving the CD command. And we need to run a below script to start the PK chunking job. The script would be like CURL H, session ID, content type, car set, S4 enable PK chunking equal to true. This is a header for PK chunking. Hyphen D, create job.xml, which is the XML file that we have created to create the job. The instance from which we are retrieving the uh, records slash services slash async slash version slash job. Salesforce will return an XML response which will have the job ID corresponding to the job that we have started. Now we need to create a file called query.txt which is a text file and we need to save it in the same folder where we have saved the create job.xml. This text file will contain the SQL query that we need to execute to retrieve the data. Here, for example, it is select ID comma name from account. Now in CMD, we need to run the query to start uh, the query batch. The script is CURL hyphen D query dot TXT, which is the query text that we have created hyphen H session ID content type care set Salesforce instance slash services slash async slash version slash job slash job ID slash batch. Now Salesforce will return an XML response which have the batch ID corresponding to the first job that we have initiated. To get the ID of all the batches in the job, we need to run a below script in CMD, which is CURL hyphen H session ID space, the Salesforce instance from which we have retrieved the data, slash services, async, version, slash job, slash job ID, slash batch. 
So this is a base URL till job ID. We can append some of the attributes to get different statuses based on the uh, parameter that we append. So then next we can monitor the job by give, by running the CURL as CURL hyphen H session ID instance URL slash services slash async slash version slash job slash job ID. So job ID is the ID that Salesforce returned in the XML format. Now to monitor a particular batch, we need to append the batch ID to the base URL. To monitor all the batches, we need to append the batch keyword to the base CURL script. To get the result ID of a particular batch, we need to append slash batch slash batch ID slash result in the base script of CURL. It will give a response which will return the result ID for that particular batch. Now to retrieve the result of that result ID, we need to run the below script in CMD. The output will be in the XML format. We need to up append the result slash result ID to the base script. To extract the result to an Excel file or a CSV file, we need to append the file name dot extension. So a new file will be created in the local folder where we have saved other files. That is a query file or the create job file. Once we have retrieved all the uh, results, then we need to close the job. For that, we need to create a file called close job dot XML. And in that file, we need to have the state as closed. We need to run the following script in command line to close the job. That is CURL hyphen H, session ID, content type, cal set at close job.xml, instance slash services slash async slash version slash job slash job ID. This is how PK chunking work in CURL. Now coming to the limitations of PK chunking, of course, PK chunking is having some limitations. PK chunking cannot be enabled for queries with order by or where clause on the ID field or the limit clause in the query. Enabling PK chunking in data loader is still an idea. Each chunk is processed as a separate batch that counts towards your daily batch limit. To summarize, to extract tens or hundreds of millions of records from Salesforce, but for better performance and reliability, we need to split the job into a set of separate queries. We need to manually execute these separate queries to retrieve a smaller portion of data and then aggregate the entire data to get the entire result. The new PK chunking feature in bulk API automates this process by using primary key of an object to break down the data into manageable chunks Query them separately and get the entire data easily and faster. This feature is supported for all the custom objects, most of the standard objects, and their history and sharing table. I have enclosed the references that I have used while preparing for this topic. That's all for today. Thank you. And I would like to thank the entire LC21 team for giving me an opportunity to present my topic before all of you. Thanks again.